ईशं प्रभु सर्वूपाविनाशी अनिर्देश्य सर्वेन्द्रियागम सत्यम अचिंत्यक्षर व्यापक अभ्यक्तत्व जगद्भाधीश पयाद पयाद ओम शांति 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 ओ लॉर्ड सुप्रीम यू आर दि इम्पेरिसेबल अनडिफाइनेबल बीइंग एट यू एट यू एपियर एज एवरीथिंग टू बी रियल यू आर इम्पेरिसेबल टू द सेंसेस यू आर इम्परसेप्टेबल टू द सेंसेस Yet, you are the very truth, which is incomprehensible and immutable. You are the all-pervading hidden essence behind all this appearance, O Lord, and light of the Lord. Do save us from all ignorance and death. O peace, peace, peace be unto us all. so today our topic is big picture what is the big picture the sami has introduced that idea about big picture wonderful idea i didn't think that way but it gives me inspiration to think one time sri ramakrishna is talking with m and talking about what do you think about me and then it's discussion about incarnation came and then he said what about me so he ramakrishna asked this question to him and in response he was saying that you are you are avatar you are like christ and then he gave some examples and some similarities with the teachings of him and christ and but ramakrishna said avataras are what they are like a whole and to that whole you see the infinite picture and if you the, the, the whole increases what happens the expansion happens and you see the bigger picture and bigger picture and bigger and ultimately you cannot comprehend that what is how big is that so it is the incarnation when they come we can think of them they are the big picture we are the human being we are only small pictures and it is incarnation god when descends that the big picture but we go back to upanishad there we find that the scriptures are talking about thinking something big in the upanishad chandogya upanishad there was a sage who you know the sage name of the sage narada and he went to learn about big picture so he went to his guru sanat kumar the name was sanat kumar and the sanat kumar he asked sir please teach me that infinite truth then he said oh oh wait wait what do you know first tell me what do you know what is your knowledge let me understand then i can start from there mm. so he said oh i have studied so many subjects material science astronomy your meta met, metallurgy these that and the study of the snake and gandharva vidya this music these that so many and after saying so many 14 or 10 10 or 12 such subjects then the teacher said namai bhitat you learn only by name you don't know anything all this knowledge is not knowing anything mm. there is something 
that which is bigger picture, big thing. We live in our life, let us see how we live. We live in a very narrow picture of our life. We see things immediate, but we don't think, see things what is behind, what is beyond, and what is the ultimate truth. That's why we live with very little things, and because we live with petty things, if anything I love, anything I feel attached, if it goes away, and instantly what happens? Our cry, our tears come, our suffering, our misery, loss, 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 monetary loss, health, losing the health, loss of beauty, youth, loss, 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 loss. If we look back to our life, mostly we think that I am lost because we live with very petty things, little things. But there is no pity. Everything is divine. There is a big picture behind it. That's why that same Sanat Kumar, the teacher, talked with, told, Who is that baby? Can, can you please take to the other room? It will be easy for you. You can take the library room. That will be easy. Uh, so, talk to the... Uh, he said that you ask for something big. The teacher said, Bhuma tu evo vijigya shitabba. You have to ask for the Bhuma. All this knowledge, limited knowledge. And it ends in limitation. Even if you have achieved a great achievement and uh, success in any, any science, any branch of science or anything, but you know, still people of highest excellence, no? Today's world, even the Noble Laureates and greater people who are masterminds, no? What they say, I don't know anything. Go to the top neuroscientist. Go to the astrophysicist. Go to any any field of science. They say I have known only this, and there's so much. Huh? There's a famous statement of what Newton's statement. No, there's on the only searching for some pearls in the sand huh? of the motion. <coughs> knowledge is so vast. So every knowledge, though it is great but it has its limitation. And that, because limited, we cannot be free from our suffering. We cannot get out of our limitations. We, whenever I think of anything, it is I think of me and mine. This me, I never think that I am something beyond. Therefore, what is me, connected with me, my, my body, me means my body, me means my mind, me means my emotions, me means my intellectual accomplishment, intellectual knowledge. So this me surrounds around this little thing and because and me and mine, connected with me is mine. And anything happens in these limited areas, we think we are lost, we are dead, we are gone. Rabindranath Tagore is to sing, has his composition, beautiful, beautiful song, that's what he said, I refer all the time, no, Tagore. So he said that I live with very little things. That's why what goes, what is lost, that is lost. All poluya thaki tai jahaja e tahamur jai. Kwanatuku jodi harai taloi pran kore hai hai. Alpo loiya thaki. I live with Alpo, very little. My world is very little, little world of me and mine, and associated with something which is perishable. 
which is, which is subject to destruction. In time it comes, in time it goes away. And Tagore has given a beautiful idea about that, what is my life? I am trying to cling on, hang on to anything comes to me. I keep it. And you know, whatever we try to hang on, that brings us suffering late. At that moment, it may be very alluring, but as time goes, we find that it may, makes a scar in my life. He says, giving the example, that as the river bed, as if trying to hold all the water, to hold it, but the flow of water runs away and he is getting lost. What to do? No one stays with me. Therefore he thinks meaninglessly, I am also following the same way in this world. What comes, I want to hold on. And when it goes, I start crying. But nothing comes, nothing goes. But if we had learned how to, that's, that's the Tagore's beauty. Jaha jai or jaha kichu thake, whatever stays and whatever goes. If I would have learned to give it to, O oh Lord, you, the Almighty, then there is no loss, there is no destruction. All remains in its infinite glory, in its own divine ecstatic glory. In, in you there are millions and billions of stars and galaxies in the sun and the moon. No one gets lost in the space, no? You see how the infinite stars and galaxies are there. They don't get lost, no. They go from here to here or, or to black hole and black hole is also in the space comes out and goes and comes out. In the infinite, nothing gets lost. That's why in you, O oh Lord, there is how many stars and moons and suns are there. And nothing gets lost there. Even this particle and subatomic particle, Onu, Paramanu, even molecule, atom, go to the subatomic level, that also nothing gets lost. And my, in my life, which I cry for, holding on to the petty things, if all my little things, is it not available in your cosmic reality? That is the big picture to think about. Here we cry and there we enjoy. We enjoy the oneness. Enjoy nothing in me, that big me. I am not the body-mind. I am that divine. I am that ever, ever blissful, joyful, Satchidananda Self. I call Brahman, I am the Atman. Let us lift ourselves and our awareness into that consciousness. Whenever we are away from that, therefore, there we cry, there we, our loss is irreparable loss. But in the infinite expanse of me, which we call God in dualistic language and Vedanta called Atman, in, when you go that level, nothing is lost. Everything stays there in the infinite space as everything is there. So in God, everything is... And I can find all my lost things there, which has passed, which has gone. My friendship. Uh, we love so many people in our life from our childhood. How many people are gone? No more in the physical world. But are they gone? Yes, they are gone. Physically. In the limited perspective of life, alpo. As I see you as a human being, as you see me as a human being, my perception about the world is all limited, 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 limited. And we never look at the big picture the big picture behind every little thing, every particle of sand, there is a big picture, but we don't ever have the eye to see, mind to think. We, re we recall William Black, eh? there's a famous 
poem, what is that? To see a world in a grain of sand. A grain of sand is so little. But to see a world, the whole universe is there. Modern science takes us to this idea. It's, it's no, no more a theory. It is not a fantasy of some sages or saints or some idle brain sitting somewhere and not doing things, talking about philosophy. This is the reality. Go to the subatomic particle and see the infinitude of the energy. Tremendous power, tremendous energy, tremendous reality there behind. The apparently a little grain of sand. And see, and a heaven in a wild flower. Can we see that? The ancient sages have saw that. The scoby, the, the poets, they see that. They don't see the flower only, but what is behind the flower? That flower, wild flower, it grows in, in the nature. How many billions and trillions of wild flowers are there? We watch, we drive and see beautiful wild flowers of different color. Can you see the infinity there? Can you see the glory of the Lord there? Can you see what, whose smile, whose spark is, is just showing through the little tiny flower? To see and heaven in a wild flower, to see heaven, the divine, the pure, the absolute, the changeless, the timeless, spaceless reality behind even a tiny little wild flower. Yes, you can have it. That is called vision. That is the big vision. That is the big view. Hold infinity in the palm of, in your hand and eternity in an hour. To live in a moment, in that ecstatic moment, when you touch the divine, this one hour, you are in eternity. Time does not move there. When you touch the base, when you go to the divine big picture, there is no change there, changeless state. So that is an eternity. That's why it's called in an hour you be in eternity. So it is a, they say, sages, saints, they see the same thing everywhere. The truth, the big picture, and we always look at the small picture of our life. From our childhood, we only learn to cry. We learn only to say, my suffering is so much you do not know. I am lost. No one looks at me. I serve so much. No one cares for me. Are you me? Which me? This me? This me is changing. What me? It's a very confusing word. Whatever is which somebody calls my name, immediately I respond. And I respond means thinking about me what? I am this body-mind complex. That's all. I don't think that I have a divine entity which is universal, which is absolute, which is changeless. So to look at that infinite perspective of power is the looking at the big picture. And also in our life, if we look at that, we have only very petty goals of life. We never think totally, the big picture, ultimately why we are born here, the big picture. No, oh, no, we are born here. When a child comes and we teach them, study well, study well, study well. Why to study? No, you will get a good schooling. And that schooling that will take you to give good society stamp a, a, of your recognition. You will earn money, you will have a good house, you will have a good car. Okay. Okay, get it. Then what? You've got a good job got a good car, got a good education, then what? Go. Oh, now, now go get married and have family, this, that, or whatever you do. Then what? Then what? Then what? At the point of our age, when you come, 80, 90, then you say, hey, what did I do whole life? Most of the people really then think about what did I do? How do I spend my life? Already so many years are gone. And what I achieve now? I'll have to go single-handedly. No one will participate with my journey. Ah. 
So, but my journey is what journey? Of the body's journey. Again, to remember it is body's journey, not the soul does not go, does not come. That is the big picture, never goes, never. And that picture has never been taught to us. And we never think about that. And that's why our goal of life is not set at the very beginning. It should be set at the very beginning. Life's goal is to get this big picture, to touch this big picture, where all these limitations, all these frustrations will not be able to bother us. As Tagore gave the example, that in our mind lake, you can think of the... Eh? And all these thoughts, all these ideas, all these people in our life situation, so many things are coming, material thing, objective thing. And they are, we are trying to hold on everything to make me rich, to make me powerful. But as we move on and on and on, we see everything runs, runs away, runs away, runs away, runs away. Nothing stays. But if I think I am infinite, what am I to lose? The material thing comes, sense it experiences, whatever we see, that must have to end in something zero. Because where there is limitation, there is no joy. That's why we go back to the Upanishad, the Narada as asking the Guru, Sanat Kumar. And Sanat Kumar says, Bhuma. Jadvai bhuma tat sukham. That which is bhuma, the infinite. Happiness, joy, peace is there only. Bhuma eva sukham, nalpe sukham asti. There cannot be peace and joy eternal in alpo, limited. Nalpe sukham asti, bhuma eva sukham. Again repeating, bhuma eva sukham. And bhuma tu eva vijigya shi hmm. You have to ask, you want to ask me any question? Ask me about bhuma, that limitless, that beginningless, that endless truth, that undying truth, that timeless truth, and which is you. Ask about that question. Gita also suggests, what is the goal of life, the big picture? He says, Yang labdhva cha aparang labham mannatena adhikam tataha Attaining which, reaching that goal, you will not feel that there is any higher goal to achieve, which is contradictory to our material experience of life. Whatever you achieve, Still, you will feel, I need more. A person having a job, 60,000, he gets 100,000. Will he stop there? No, I will better if I get 200. 200 someone gets, ask him, is he happy there? Three million, even millions, Do are they happy? So in realistic life, you look at that. I, I, someone is telling the story the other day. Yeah, there was a, his, this year he got two million. But the two million is nothing for him. He wants 20 million. Go on, where is the end? Billion, go to the billion. There you are happy? No, they want more. There comes the story of Sri Ramakrishna told that story. Uh, there is always endless craving for more and more and more, no? The example is that the great Muslim uh, king, emperor, Akbar, yeah, he, was, he was very generous. So anyone comes, he will be giving gift and whatever they want, he was so generous. So he was praying and that time one fakir, means wandering monk, Muslim monk, came and he wanted to get something from the emperor. So when he came, he saw that the emperor is praying to the Allah. 
and saying, what he is saying? Oh Lord, Allah give me more land, more prosperity, more wealth, more this, more that. And this fakir, the beggar, he was sitting, so he started run, going away. When he was going away, then the emperor told him not to go away, wait. So he stood and stopped there. And after finishing his prayer, he asked this fakir, this wandering monk, uh, you came to ask something from me, but without asking anything, you are going away. What's the matter? Well, I was thinking that I have come to ask something from you, but I find that you are also begging. You are a beggar. So why shall I beg to a beggar? <laughs> let, me, let me go to beg to God who can give me everything. This is the point. There is no end of our accomplishment and no one can be satisfied there. Vedanta says, because we are infinite by our divine nature. We are infinite by our divine nature. We can stop. The struggle to touch this big shell, unconsciously the whole world is running. Running for name, fame, power, position, land, prosperity. Whatever we are doing in accomplishment in, in the field of education or field of any other science, it is all for one craving. I am endless. I cannot get satisfied being here up to this point. That's why Gita says, young love, but there is one thing one can attain. That is called the knowledge of the self, the Brahman, or we call Ish, God Bhishan. Uh, having that, cha aparang lavam, there is no more anything higher gain. There is nothing to be gained. That is the highest gain. And mind will never be asking for, oh, I need something more. When it, that's why the, what is the sign of your spiritual experience, real spiritual experience? When it will come, then you will never be asking for anything else. But saturated, self-saturated. It is full. You see everywhere fullness there. Everywhere joy and bliss permeating everywhere. It is percolating through every being that infinite peace and joy. So, no, mannante, odhikam. That is attaining that realization of the big picture. There is nothing more to add, not to more to attain. And being established just means tito, being established, no, dukhe, no. Being established in that joy, what happens? What is the meaning of searching for this big picture? When you get attained, no guru nao pi dukhe no bichallate. You will not be troubled by any type of suffering, any type of unhappiness or any type of thing which bothers our life. There is nothing to bother you. You will be established in such a ground, this all this suffering and uh, miseries and other things, death, bereavement, all will like look meaningless to you. That's the glory of attaining this big picture. So we must have to cultivate in our life this how to see this big picture. It is a theory. It is a theory, but not theory. Unconsciously, we are searching for this, this idea that we are something more than this body. We are something more than this mind. You know, look at the all religious practices. People keep the memory that tomb, create the tomb. Why? To keep, I shall be remembered. People do charity and this in the name of this my father's name or grandfather's name or my name, what does it mean? Will remember, people will remember me, remember me. How many people will remember whom? <coughs> Who we are remembering today? How many people will remember? How many noble people who are born? So there is no 
joy in that way, no accomplishment comes this way. But to establish in our divine self, that is the glory of human excellence. One can really reach that point. Say, from the look at the plant, amoeba, and we are fighting with the amoeba, no? Amoeba, we are, we are bacteria, no? We are, we are fighting with the bacteria. See how bacteria are trying to survive? You catch him this side and it gets another way. Is it not the energy behind? Something saying, yeah, you cannot kill me. I can protect, I can expand, I can way that that I can I can expand in the in the world. So the the unconscious struggle for existence, struggle for life, struggle for breathing, struggle for being in the world, to be happy, is even a plant. You stop in one side, the plant moves his direction and goes towards the sun. You cannot stop that. There is a craving. I am not stoppable by this external limitations. So, and in human being, our efforts are more intelligent efforts. But ultimate effort, those who are searching for this big picture, looking in this big picture, they are the real people who can transcend all this tremendous suffering of bereavement, pain, death, disease, hunger, thirst, yeah, jealousy, everything. We are tormented day and night because we live in the small set of picture. That's what Tagore says in wonderful ways again, that, you know, in your infinitude, as much as I move with my heart and soul and my emotions, and as my, I find there is no sorrow, no misery, no death, no bereavement. But death takes its severe toll. The suffering becomes severe when I turn my face from you and turn into this little self. What a philosophical perspective of life. And if we all of us really observe who can give us suffering, I create my suffering because I don't see the big picture, only look at my little picture. That's why Tagore says that everything that is, that is in your real self and there is no fear. And this fear and loss is only for me and I cry and weep. If I can find your real nature, if I can hold on to that real nature of that yours, then all my suffering, pain disappears in a twinkling of an eye. That is called the God realization. The moment one gets God realization, one understands this little drop is always trying. I am meaningless. I can be smashed by anything. Little drop. We are putting your identity in the little drop coming from the sky and it's falling. I am going to die, die, die. And you touch the ocean. What happens? Who can kill you? You are ocean. Your drop quality, drop name is just gone as soon as you touch the ground of the ocean. No? So, this is the foundation of our very being, that there is that divine entity within us, and we have to charge and look for that. Shankaracharya, in this commentary, says that anything finite, anything finite that causes thirst, trishna, that is, it increases desire for more. Anything finite, limited, we seek for. That creates more desire, no? You get a good, sumptuous meal today. Huh? And tomorrow, if you don't get up to that standard, you will not be happy. You will be unhappy. Rather, you will refer to the yesterday's good food and today's not. But if you get a glimpse of the touch of meditation, 
you touch the big picture, big, big substratum here, little bit, one ray of light, one little sparkling of a moment, something comes. Even you dream, a good dream. See, come out and you recall that dream. And you feel, oh, I was so happy, I had that experience. And you, every time you remember that, your mind gets uplifted. Contrary to that, any sing sensate experience, today I got this experience and I, I don't get to, yesterday I got it and not today, then I am frustrated, I feel bad, rather I am miserable. So this is the Shankara's argument. Anything finite. So don't try to hold on to finite. That means, will you be all monks? Shankaracharya is saying, be, be a monk. No, no, no. You enjoy with God. You are seeing anything finite as the finite and it is causing thirst for more. But in that finite, if we could learn to see that there is the big picture behind it, that small, tiny wildflower, as, as William Blake talks about, the grain of sand which is being spoken here, within that tiny thing, can we see something more? Whose play this world is going on? Whose play? Who is playing? Whose role is this? It's God playing in wearing different costumes. Then you can love everyone much deeper than that we love now. We love as a person, as a person. And the person has his emotion. When it matches with my, I love more. And when you don't match mentally, then you separate yourself and fight. And every life becomes miserable life. Why? Because we live with our little petty identity. With my mind, my emotions, my ego, your emotion, your mind, your understanding. And there is the conflict. So here it is said that anything finite, you don't try to ever be, feel that you will be ever be accomplished to find perfect joy in limited object. But you can see every limited object is because there is the infinite behind. Every wave and ripple, look at this big picture. Go and just imagine yourself standing on the bank of, on the beach of, Pacific. Millions and billions and trillions of waves are coming up, no? They're all rising, struggling, fighting. Some are with love, embracing each other. Some are dashing each other, fighting. Look at that. That's ours, our life. But where do they go? If there is no background of that ocean, can anything happen? But if you can see this is a horrible picture. In our life we are struggling and fighting and emotionally lost and destroyed every day. All the ripples think we are all ripples or all waves in the infinite ocean of consciousness. But we can enjoy this if I see, oh, the same ocean is playing with me. Same God in so many ways. They are all God playing with God. That's a big picture then everything becomes enjoyable. Fight is also, who is fighting with whom? There is the divine, here is the divine. So to lift our awareness from the mundane to the divine, that solves our problem and that gives us solace. And that is called spiritual life. Spiritual life is divinizing our attitude, uh, our, our look, how we look at the world, how we see the world, how we feel the world, how we interact with the world. So this is the teaching. So Sankara says that anything that is finite, if you look at the finite aspect of it and try to find a solution, you will not find because it will increase your desire to get more and more and more. That is to increase the desire. Desire will increase. Whatever we get, we desire more. Eh? Sankara says even, if you get the whole world universe, suppose someone gives you the whole world, eh? 
it possess even then we will be dissatisfied and unhappy huh? so now we are not an, we are unhappy in the earth so we are going to planet moon and planet uh, what you call them uh, mars, mars. mars. and <laughs> uh, we are purchasing land there <laughs> we are not happy here and we'll get build a house there and we'll st- uh, whether we will we'll survive or not we do not know but we are expecting to build up our house there so in this is the struggle going on not here not here something there something there something there that's why it is increasing our desire more and more uh, that is endless but that is therefore that which is finite according to shankara he is a great philosopher so he says according to him he says that which is finite not bad you want to enjoy experience go but it has its bijam dukha bijam it has as its seed is suffering and the background is suffering you want to catch little something hold on to that what happens you see that which you hold i can give you a closer example in your life you tell your children uh give them all good education and say everything and tell that this is good this is good do this do this do this what will happen they will listen up to 18 and when they go into the <laughs> college they will not turn back to you anymore then you say oh my god i did so much and my son does not talk to me my daughter does not talk to me because you wanted that through that your wish should be fulfilled do this you will be good for you do this why they will listen to you they have their own ideas and thoughts so they don't that's why it is it what is subject of love that becomes an object of suffering the seed of dukkha is a very philosophical point look at our own life everyone can give a testimony of that whatever you loved and whatever you wanted you gave your time energy and everything and it didn't work or it worked even even if it is worked then also it creates suffering because you want more if it does not work then you are already lost then you are also dukkha and suffering in both end because it is the bija the seed behind is the bija ha huh? so dukkha bijam therefore sarat kumar said that which is infinite is the source of happiness there is no happiness in the finite happiness is only in the infinite but one must try to understand what the infinite is so therefore the infinite is the big picture we are talking about <coughs> that's why vedanto when you talk about vedanta vedanta always analyzes no see is it a good experience that we are talking about whatever in our life all is cause of suffering eh, who will hear eh? this type of if you are interested because you may have some experience of life but many of the people will run away see, hearing this type of statement because vedanta starts sami vivekananda said vedanta system begins with tremendous pessimism there is nothing to in the limited don't try this way don't try to see the big picture are i like to eat i like to see i like to dance i like to enjoy and you are saying little little don't look huh <laughs> so really really vedanta that's why very difficult to conceive and as if it is a pessimistic path hey, don't love this world don't look at the flower hey, it is all po a small small are why no it is it appears that it is at the beginning it is pessimism and it is tremendous pessimism as it were but it ends with real optimism why you see the flower you enjoy the fragrance but also see the big picture who is behind this tiny picture you created the flower you created the water you created the fertilizer you created the sun we did nothing but it is just coming what is the power behind it look at that picture that is the most optimism 
Optimism is that that one which sustains me. I am talking. You are seeing. You are listening. Who is behind you? Who is behind me giving sustenance to our real, this apparent body, mind and emotions? What is that? It's a big picture. That is the ocean of consciousness. That is the ocean of joy. The ocean of bliss. Ocean of perfection. Ocean of timeless state. That is the thing which we should have to end. That's why Vedanta appears at the beginning as totally, tremendously pessimistic. But real Vedanta leads us to the big picture which is real optimism. We deny sense optimism but as hard the real optimism of the super sensuous. Swami Vivekananda said in Vedanta what is given? Now we deny the sense optimism. What the sense experience is giving you, what the senses are showing me the external world as this tiny, this little, this perishable. Today you love the beautiful flower, bring it. A bouquet of flower. Beautiful its color, its fragrance and everything. Keep it for a few days, then what happens? You yourself throw away. If you don't throw, you get the smell. Bad smell. So, where is the perfect joy in this limited flower? But if you can just enjoy the beauty, this flower, oh, this fragrance, this divine fragrance, what is behind this? That is the Lord. That is the glory of the Atman. That is the joy. That is the Satchidan on the self. You love one, your friend, your mom, your dad, your child, who is smiling to that smile? It is the Lord smiling behind it. It is His joy expressing. So try to see the divine. That is the real optimism. Eh? And that is the super sensuous. Sense can give us little, but it is penetrate through the sense and go beyond. Super sensuous experience. That's why Shamiji Vivekananda continues, the real happiness is not in the senses, but above the senses. And it is in every man. So real happiness is not in the senses. These senses cannot give real happiness because it itself is limited. And it is subject to change. See, my eyes. Uh, my eyes are now, I can see. Tomorrow it may be that I will not be able to see. How the senses can give me eternal joy? All the senses are limited by its own nature. Therefore, the real happiness cannot be found in the senses, but above the senses, and it is in every person. A sort of optimism which you see in the world is what will lead to ruin through the senses. That's why, what is the call? If you actually, Swamiji's last idea, the sort of optimism which we see in the world, being in the sense experience only, limiting ourselves, is what will lead to ruin through the senses. Because it starts with the senses, it ends with the senses. But if you transcend the senses, go, you take, it, take help of the senses, but at the same time go beyond. See something more. In the whole world is nothing but Vedanta said, Satchit Ananda, plus name and form. Name, you are different from me, according to Vedanta, or we are all different from each other in our name and in our form. And that also in a subtle way in our mind and emotions and intellect, no? But at the background it is all Satchidananda. If we can forget our little petty I, ego-centric life, then it becomes universal. Our all problem is being egocentric, I-centric, the small I-centric, not the big I. That big I is the big picture. That big picture, we are all one, absolutely free. And in the small picture, we are dead. We are the sufferers in the world. We are subject to pain and decay. Therefore, our sadhana should be to the sense experience, sort of limited picture, 
to go to the big picture, the unlimited picture, the real picture, and there comes the perfect solution of life's problems. Swami Vivekananda, while he was in the wandering days, he was seated under near Almona in Himalayas. He was walking one day and he sat for meditation under a tree. And that this meditation becomes so deep and profound. And when after that he came out, he said, I have solved a great mystery. The mystery is this. I have solved the mystery of the macro and the micro. Today I have the experience, what is the macro that is in the micro? Micro, the small tiny, with a sand, in a wildflower, in anything which is insignificant, the same, and that is the macro, the whole cosmos, the stars, galaxies, infinite, the same one aspect of the divine, the big picture. He had this experience, wonderful experience. So thank you, this is the big picture. As I said in the conclusion, we need not have to cry because we are limit, living in the limited picture. But it's giving us the idea to see something infinite behind that which we see as limited. Our senses only can give us the view to be limited. My mind can only create some limited idea about the truth. But to go beyond the senses, beyond the mind, how? Through this, try to see the divine everywhere. He is shining, everything shines. Tasya bhasa sarva midam vibhati. He is shining, the Lord shining, the big picture shining, everything shines. The small ego, all the ripples and bubbles. It is a dance going on. It is a joyful dance. Not fight anymore when you know it is all the same reality. So that is the bigger picture. Thank you all. So we'll have some question or what? Uh, now you have your question. Uh, we used to do that question answer because we are not yet so open to uh, be very uh, close place for a long time. That's why we are not sitting in the library, but we can have some questions. few minutes we can have some question answer. If you have anything. I want to ask one, one thing. Our monastic family, you see, how, how can I see the big picture? Uh, I see my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. here also. Not just in the monastery, but Howard. Yeah, it is. I think, I think you are correct. <laughs> we are all monk or devotee. We are the same. Uh, philosophically, if we understand that this is a practice, it does not come just by that. It, it takes long time practice. That's why it's the every day we, what we try to do in our morning meditation, we try to think of God here, no? And really, we try to come out of the sensitive universe. Everyone, all of you, most of you meditate. What do you do? You look at that. You are coming out of the small picture and going to a bigger picture. See? You close your eyes. You are not seeing anything little. Someone moving, someone coming, this, that. It's just, uh, someone is talking something. Some people put ear plug. Why? Not the sense of ear, ear, hearing. I am not going to touch with that. I am not trying to take that information. So you are denying the sensitive universe. It's too hot, too cold, eh? you get disturbed, no? So sit in a good place, quiet place, comfortable. So what, in, during our meditation, what we are doing? 
we are trying to withdraw ourselves from the sensitive universe. And this is not negative. We are trying to get out of that. But we are adding to it what? We are coming to the thinking that there is divine. Guru has told us, our teacher, spiritual teacher may have told us, no? To that the divine is within. Think of the divine this way. Huh? So what are you doing? You are withdrawing from the sensitive universe, going to the bigger picture. And the concept is that you are thinking on God, not the limited person. Suppose you may think of Christ, you may think of Buddha, you may think of Ramakrishna, but you don't think, you may think of Shiva. You, know, you don't think of a stone, but you think of the effulgent power, the divine, the joyful, blissful expression of the infinite. So, whenever it's going, we're turning our attention to the big picture. And if we really can get a little success, most of that time, we just fight with the mind. Mind goes all the corners, uh, to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south, to uh, Balboa Park, to uh, which park, <laughs> to New York, to Boston, to... Uh, so, everywhere it moves, but not here. But anyhow, so we, by chance, one is successful to touch the base of the big picture, uh, whatever. Hmm? Some may think God as infinite. Some may think, uh, not I don't like form. Uh, but I don't like the form. But uh, what uh, I like to think of God as infinite space. But infinite space, think, anyhow, that is infinite for you. But that is not infinite. That's also a small place created by the mind. You think, I will think of the ocean, a big ocean. Okay, think of the big ocean. Big ocean, that's also, you make a map of the big ocean. But anyhow, what may be the subject, we are thinking of the big picture. And as we go, and by God's grace, one day, you get a little touch of that. You will experience, come out, then you see the same trees, plants, human being. You will see that they are alive, alive with joy. Something more. You will feel that is, they are your own. That feeling will come. That is called the identification, seeing God. And that helps us. This experience in meditation will help us to see the divine while, with eyes open. And we... Mind, when it is trained this way to see the divine, see the big picture behind, it is in first imagination. God is behind you. Satchidananda is behind you. Some consciousness is behind you. Just thought, no? It is a thought. We have no con money, real experience. But this practice again and again and again and again, Eh? this higher picture of the divinity will appeal. So then we can love each other. We can love only when I find there is similarity. In this world we love whom? Where I find some similarity. And when you don't find similarity, the love which you had, you break that love. You divorce. When? When love was there, you unite. And when divorce comes when? You don't love. This is different, this is different, this is different. So how we can put that idea that the differences will be there, accept it. These differences in the body, mind, emotion, ego, it will be there. I am a different person, you are a different person. The human side. But the spiritual side is behind that. Without that spiritual sign, the human side cannot function. Suppose there is no ocean, and ripples and waves will be there dancing. Imagine, all these ripples and bubbles we are talking about, they are dancing, but there is no ocean. Is it possible? So all these things are happening because of the ground of consciousness. So we have to see, that's why it is simply said, try to see God in everywhere. First see God in good things, and then you see God in what is not that good. But at the beginning stage, always to see good in the sunrise, good in the nature, in the full moon night, 
in the smiling of a baby. That baby, uh, see, you look at her face, his face, he'll find joy. Anyone will find joy. There is the beauty there. So see the beauty in those things for the beginning. And try to love, try to feel identity. And then it can be extended into all the other areas, gradually, gradually. As one moves in spiritual uh, world more and more, that progress will be there. So for monastics, our material, our day and night thought is that, not this, not this, I am the Atman, I am the Brahman, no? Eh? I am that, all these ideas. So I am that, thou art that. Vedanta says two words, I am that, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, I am Satchidananda, not the body, not the mind. Thou, yes, you are not the body, not the mind, you are that. So if I am that and you are that, that remains common for us. As much that becomes common in our life, that much love flows spontaneously. That's why holy people can love everyone unconditionally because they don't get stuck into the other aspect of the body, mind, emotion aspect. That's why you have to love everyone as vegetable representation of the divine. So it is very difficult. Oh, people say, my Rama is in everywhere. Rama, 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 those are Rama devotees. Christ devotees will say, Christ, 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 Christ. Christ in the front, Christ in the back, Christ on the right, Christ on the left. Huh? Our Vedanta um, student will say, Atma, the star, Atma is the above, Atma is below, Atma on the right, Atma on the left, Atma in the front, Atma on the back. Change the language, words. You say Rama, someone says Atman, someone says Brahman, someone says Christ, matters little. If you understand it is the, we are talking about the eternal truth, big picture, eternal reality, which is unchanging reality. If we understand that, then that is the foundation. And we have to practice this every day. First, as I said, to the good and noble things, where it is easy for us to bring our awareness, to see the divine. And when it is not, just keep away. Keep away, keep yourself away from them at this beginning time. And when you mature, then you will do something. So, starting from this point to go on. Further, more, 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 more. Eh? And spiritual growth means Swami Vivekananda's expansion. You know, that is the point. You are becoming spiritual, you may have vision and experience. It does not, not mean anything. Your spiritual means you will be feeling connected with others. You will feel unselfish. How unselfish? Because this self is not limited here. Unselfishness means you identify with others more and more. That is called unselfishness is actually spirituality. Selfishness is death and selfishness cripples our sense. It brings us into the low identity of ourselves and unselfishness expand. So this is idea to help others, to do good to others. These are the basic principles because it leads us to the big picture. Okay. So any other? Anyone? Yes, please. Here. Oh. Last year you with our hardship, Sangsar's hardship, do we create this or God created this so we don't see the big picture? Oh. Yeah, that is the fundamental question. <laughs> That's called Vedanta, called Maya. <laughs> and who created? Who created? It is when uh, I create my... Okay. Uh, Karma theory says it's I created. And karma theory means that you feel that your ego is there. And if you say God has created, then God has created, then, then we should not be bothered about. <laughs> if God's creation, why I am getting involved? That means I say it is God created, but I don't believe it. God has created me. It is his tool. Suppose you manufacture certain thing, it is under you. You... You, you are the controller. 
So may, you create some machine. Machine cannot say, it is my problem. Problems will be the who has created. So, so that's why if we say God has created, all responsibility goes that side. If I say I have created, it's my karma, I will have to work out my karma. It both has two aspects. One is devotional aspect. If you say God has created, I pray to God to clear my problems. And the karma, I have done something bad, so let me do something, think differently to come out of this. You are saying something. I was going to ask, um, how is it that we wind up with the uh, the culture? How do we wind up with the uh, perspective of the small picture as the default? Why do we, why... Why does that seem to be the original position and something that we have to work to get out of it? How do we get there to begin with? How do we get from the... How we are in the small picture or what? Right. Why we are in the... small? walking up backwards, you know? Uh You know, it is all... uh, There is no real response excepting saying that it is uh, the play of maya or ignorance. But, you know, it is like... uh, That's why... It, uh, why it is? It is like Vedanta will say there is nothing as such. Suppose you are sleeping and you are seeing a tiger attacking you and you are trying to escape from the tiger. You are running. If someone asks, hey, where the tiger came from? There is no proper response, this reply. Mm. But when you wake up, they say, oh, it was all dream. So Vedanta says, when you wake up, into our big picture, then we'll say, oh, it was not there. It was a dream. It is a mental creation. Who created? God's mind created or my mind created? Vedanta has two stands. One, God's mind created. Another, another higher philosophy, it is my mind created. As you, as we all create our dream world. Who creates our dream world? My mind creates my dream world. I am the creator of my entire dream. From my past impressions, whatever in the stock of the mind, that popped up and they mixed, and that is my dream world. And in that dream, I have created myself. I have created my friend. I have created my enemy. I have created a tiger. I have created a car, river, street, whatever I have created. And when the dream breaks, then you say, oh, where is that? There is no such thing at all. So this is one point. It is called ajato bhadu. The world is not created at all. It is a just mental thinking. And in, in our normal level, we'll say it is God's creation and it is just for fun. God's fun. <laughs> and then say, it's God's fun but our suffering. Somebody said that, Ramakrishna said, God's uh, why this world? Well, God's lila, God's play. Then he said, God's play, but our suffering. Then Ramakrishna said, if it is God's play, where are you? You have no existence. It's God's play. God is playing. In your dream, really, what if we analyze our dream, dream study is a great science. If we analyze our dream, see how you are getting frightened by your own imagination. Someone is chasing you to kill you with a gun. Hare, who has created that guy? Even the gun material, the gun, by your mind. Your mind has created the gun, the gun material, the person, the road in which he's chasing, and I am running away, that road, and I myself, everything is by... <laughs> See, we do these things every night, but we never analyze that. So in the God's play also it is going on like that, the cosmic play they call. That's why the whole universe is so big. It is for our tiny little ego and it's a big ego. Big fun, big fun. So this is the way they explain. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu Thank you.